inaugural game here at the Major. We'll be having a slight disadvantage, I guess, starting on the T side here. It's uh, not favoured for sure. As we get into things, we'll have a look at the buy. One smoke, one flashbang, and you can see most of the players making their way towards the inside area. Could be a smoke down lower ramp or one towards connector, but we can see a player in the form of JKS ready to frag at that upper ramp, and he's pretty good at that USB. We'll see if we can find the headshots here. Yeah, the off angle playing in the corner, so he does have to cross over to try and get away. That means he's spotted, but he fires early and uses the movement mechanics of pistols to his advantage. Finds the headshot on Krizen. So, opening pick. And the opening round for the Major on both these teams goes to Renegades. Looked like a bit of a wild bullet there. Not necessarily the player he was aiming at as he was moving while firing, but still, he gets that opening pick, and that's exactly what he wanted. That's going to push them back towards outside. Kikert's still there with the smoke and flashbang. You can see three CTs ready to rock and roll towards outside, and there's still plenty of time on the clock here. CS seems known for their slower-paced T-side gameplay. As we see, Buster and co. head towards the Ivy position. At this point, it does look like head towards outside, probably a smoke towards the left-hand side of Ivy. Head out towards the sunny side and have one player just holding inside for any rotations, anyone flanking towards the pop dog. That'll be Kukert, as it will be now. Liaz holding towards the Ivy, but he takes his vision away at the worst possible time. Buster does get towards the end of the Ivy with the PT-50 and a smoke down as well. Liaz loses the vision, and where do they go from here? Liaz trying to find someone through the smoke. Add to the advantage, down to 26 seconds. Gratisfaction finds Buster, just shot, saw enough of him through the ladder, at the top of the ladder, I should say. The edge of the smoke, Leas does get Fitch. This is impressive from Renegades. No one even lo losing any health at this point in time. No damage, that changes. As soon as I say anything, it does, but Leas is able to collect, and that's that's a solid round. They didn't overcommit, they got the advantage, they allowed them to fall back, no problem. They played it as they should. Yeah, absolutely. That's all down to JKS, just so shoving them towards outside there. Uh, that initial kill, I feel like that doesn't come in. If uh, JKS is spots and they might still commit towards the inside area. Try and get that plant down. All the teams do focus on the inside area for the pistol rounds because you are almost guaranteed the bomb plant. It's much more difficult to get it down outside because it's an open area. You need more smokes, more utility in general just to get near the bomb site. So we should see the full eco here from Avangar with no bomb being planted and indeed just PD-50s and some Glocks. We have got Fitch and the Deagle, so he's investing a little bit more as we'll see if they can do any damage here in round number two. I doubt it. To be honest, we'll see if there's anything that can be done. If Renegades are smart, they just want to keep these rifles up. You can see they focus on firepower completely. A lot of teams, especially in CSGO in today's game, they'll get the MP5s out, they'll get MP9s, all that sort of stuff. They want to challenge those AKs in the third round and actually be viable to win it and get a 3-0 on the board. As uh, if you come into with a the third round with UMPs, a shotgun, something like that, you're going to be at a disadvantage. So right now they have five rifles and they want to have all their utilities. They need a nice clean round here. And that's a great start. Liaz will take down Fitch and you can see they don't have to overcommit. Just need to get that information. Just need to hold them back and when they feel like they're under pressure, just make sure they go into those crossfires here. Jake can maybe towing the line between aggression and discipline. They will see whether he can stay alive. He cannot. And so he'll go down first, but Liaz fighting back there. Augs already out, so we'll see a lot of them at this major. I do agree with the sentiment on the desk that you either adapt or you're going to have to deal with the consequences. Well, yes, that was a very impressive shot to Jane, not using the scope. Quickly back out in position, and he collects ace for him as well. Only the second round, and we've already got an ace in the major. Lee has the one to do it. The new man, the new blood, who's got quite a following in Australia, according to the chat and the boys on the desk. But just to go back, you know, guys like Scream, who are always tweeting out about it or putting it on social media that they hate the AUG. You know what? It's time to accept it. This gun is extremely powerful. It absolutely is. And uh, with the price reduction, you're going to see a lot of it at this major. And uh, I'm excited for it to see what teams have kind of developed with the AUG. And maybe they've changed some of their setups and they could be a little bit more aggressive at the start of each round and go for those picks. And maybe just run one or uh, who knows? We get into that gun round. It is going to be Jame oh. with the wall bang that lands. It obviously hits Gretis Factory for a couple of walls there. It takes it down to 84, but it's Azza fighting two from LA against Fitch with a quick solo play down towards the pop dog that gives away his life and Matt they've got two smokes here and a five on four they have to come in and try and get a pick back here one smoke deployed by the CTs just now and they will commit they're gonna go through before that defensive utility can be put in place Buster finds JKS back to a four on four bomb to be planted as well first time they've had it down Satisfaction on the AWP tries to find the shot toward the backside of the B-bomb, but watch Buster because he's pushed up. Flash out, Dame has no problems finding Gratisfaction peeking off that. And it's going to be a difficult battle for Renegades. Finally, they've got to retake a site. They've lost control and 
Desperate through the smoke, Liaz will fire a few shots. Buster could go down on this because from the hitch, as it slides out on his right, don't think he was fully aware of the fact that they'd rotate it back through CT instead. But it's Kikert to watch Azza, and it's going to be, yeah, exactly this. Call the save. Time's pretty much gone. You've got the advantage still. Money's going to be very narrow if you overcommit, so keep what you've got and fight in the next round. Well, there we go. Avangar, like we said, no utility, really. They certainly had the AKs and the AWP of Jane. He hits that wall bang to kick things off, but no kill wasn't really that significant towards the end of the round. But they knew after losing that pick, something had to be done. They got quite fortunate on the timings there. The moment they go down the lower ramp is when JKS actually takes his vision away from the area. He's solo anchor towards the B bomb site, so he's got to be patrolling between the upper and the lower area. It looks towards upper for a split second. They've already made their way through. They hit that shot, and once the bomb's down and James set up with the AWP, it's very difficult to retake there. We saw the flashbang attempt, but when James was holding that specific angle, he can just dodge the flash, repeat, find the frag, and that was pretty much the round at that point. We are going to see the force spike come through from Renegades here as they try and maintain their lead. Currently 2-1, and now they'll have a couple of rifles, and the AWP is still in the hands of Gratis Faction. Remember, we need him to step up here against the likes of Jane as... Uh, a lot of speculation as to whether he can perform at the top level. We know he has the potential to do it. I've seen it online. I just want to see it translate to a big tournament like this, and he can show us what he's made of. So it is just going to be the CZ for the man who started off with an ace. Playing a passive shoulder peek to see when they commit to the hallway. Wants them up close, does spot, and realizes it. Incendiary down, that'll subside the rush for now. Gratis Faction still watching out toward A-Main as well, covers off the other side, so they pretty much stifle Avangard trying to go fast, which was the goal. That's fine for Avangard at this point. you you still got a minute on the clock. You know they force ball at this point. If they have incendiaries, you can assume that's the case. And they've baited a bit of utility out here. They've got control of Ivy per se. They've got towards the end of it, at least. It looks likely to be the outside split with three players focusing on that Ivy position with the bomb and Chris just to try and take some attention away. But as a inside the pod dog room once again, this time with an SMG, that's absolutely fine as they make potentially their final move. You can see Gratis Faction in the perfect position to shut this one down. But the smoke isn't ideal. They actually push past that, and he doesn't hit the shot. Backs away, though. Gratis Faction still trying to get an angle at any possibility. And if second smoke comes out, that gap gone means that it's going to be a lot more difficult still. So instead, his attention is going on to the bomb train. If he can catch them in transition with 20 seconds left, he might have a chance to stifle the round entirely, but also just win it on one kill alone instead. It's Fitchy finds, but Bomb's already in position. Buster crossed, and now it's going to be a four on four. We got a nice bomb plant. Rock show. That's you on the guitar, actually. That's not in the game. That's just Henry beside <laughs> Kit for JKS. We'll see if that comes into play. Here we go, then. Big retake about to go down. JKS does have the kit. You can see as they're flanking towards T spawn, but time is of the essence. Now, so many kills to find, and they're dropping like flies as his flank is unsuccessful. JKS with the kit. We are going to find out who's getting near that bomb site, Matthew, as Gratis Faction doing everything he possibly can here. This is equal trades for now. The bomb's ticking away. They have to recover that diffuse kit. It is picked up. Gratis Faction has got time to defuse. We get it right now but i don't think that's going to happen james done enough and he will fall back with the awp so great attempt there gratis faction with the three kills the shots we're looking for but unfortunately with the bomb planted and the kind of scrappy retake there, quite slow and segregated almost the cts can't get it done tough decision right now as well because if you'd saved the four last time okay fine you keep guns up and you can you bring a little more to this round, but you allow the economy to establish on the T side. They did well to get four kills there. Yep. They limit them, so they still have a buy, certainly, but that's all they have in reserve. Do you force buy on top of this? Do you try and go around that single AWP and really break them down right now? Because, again, that can come back to haunt you. Well, the answer is yes, it seems. And these best of ones, it's quite a daunting procedure. The fact you've got to now go in knowing you've almost sabotaged your CT economy with these four spies, this round doesn't work out for you, you're in a really rough spot. Having got to find five on the board on the T side of train in a best of one in a brutal format very early on. We know they're going to explore that opportunity as we get into round five here. Gratis Faction. You can see Liaz is still yet to die. He's seven and zero right now as they uh, struggle to get back into this one. Gratis Faction still on the AWP currently positioned right now at the Ivy area. Oh, is he going to hit this shot? Absolutely. Fitch will be taken down, but that hasn't necessarily translated to success so far. They get these opening kills and inside will fall apart, but luckily the CTs do have two players there this time. That's JKS and Atta with a UMP and a FAMAS. Can they hold them off? UMP not able to do much. Gratis Faction did find one in the ops, so at least it goes one for one on the entry. Low HP for Buster as well. Jacob could capitalize on this. Finds him. Headshot with a deagle. It wouldn't have mattered the HP. It was a fantastic shot. Jame gets the response. That allows the plant, but in doing so, only having two players up, it opens up a passage, a right of passage, that Azza certainly will seize upon because around the corner forces 
Crimson to the right, did the damage. Got his faction, got him with the AWP, but still it was made easily as the communication and positioning was so solid. It's all on game. This is what we talked about. He finds two, a chance to win it out. He's going to play up close. 19 HP. Time is his friend, but HP is not. Gratis faction manages to pull it back with his fourth, fourth kill in the round. Unbelievable scenes there. Jamie, it felt like that was enough. With the smoke there, he actually had time to maneuver and actually get them off the bomb, find those two quick kills. And Gratis Faction, three kills in the previous, didn't work out for him. Now he gets four. That seems to be enough. He's stepping up here, and he finds him a huge round. Like we said, if Renegades didn't win this particular round, they would be absolutely ruined financially. He opens up the fragging here towards Ivy. Has the actual presence of mind to actually fall back towards inside. He knows he's pushing them back towards that bomb site, and it works out for them perfectly here. James keeps the orb, but they do not force by here. Avangar, no. They've got a decent situation here. On the T side, they don't have to keep force buying here. Maybe there was an option considering the reset potential of the CTs, but they've opted for a very but, passive approach. But this goes back to the last round where they killed four out of five. Yeah. If they hadn't done that in the last round and saved, you get the same result, but there's still a buy available to Avangar. So you're in a very different composition of the game. It's crazy how that little decision, that sure. little outcome can dictate this whole half now. In an alternate universe, Maybe they have guns again. Maybe Avangar wins here. Renegades get broken. Now it's Avangar's, you know, turn to take the run. It's it's just crazy how the, the money plays into the momentum of the game. I want to point out something as well. Liaz, new player to Renegades. They talked about role shifting as it flashed in. That's an unfortunate situation. Didn't find the kill. And now they're going to swarm Jamie because they know he's pursuing a low HP player. This is oh. incredible. Falling apart. Jamie, I'll come back to my thought. Yeah. As satisfaction. They got very bloodlust upon one kill that didn't work in their favor. This is the sort of play you don't want to see when you're up against the pistols. Once you confirm their P250s, you just need to hold the crossfires. You know you're on the breaking point financially here. So five versus two, still technically recoverable here. We did say JKS, incredibly good in these situations, but someone has to step up here. Lies has provided a decent amount of frag so far, but he's got to find a few more here to stand any sort of chance. 35 seconds, and Avangar taking their time. They're waiting for a sound cue, any sort of clue that will lead them to the first CT and where they can get that bomb down. Kicker has just got a P250 here. He's got to run inside and confirm at least one player inside and then they can make the next move off that. He has falling back, trying to play distance. Only one gun grabbed from those kills as JKS is able That's to find cube. one at B, but you're right, that is the cube. Leas has bomb. That's the big change in it, though, because he's dropped a second, 13 seconds. Krizen has time to get to the E-box, back onto the ball. Oh, but they know he's going to be in that exact transition, and a brilliant nade from JKS forces Buster's hand. He's got to go for the play. No time to commit to the play. JKS wins it with a nade. That's so sick, Matt. We said they had potential to do so. Five versus two there. It all came down to the timer as well. It looked like Renegades had thrown that round away, but there it is. That one AG grenade really did completely turn the round on his head. The fact he didn't have the plant, it gave away the position of the remaining T, and then JKS could play accordingly. You could see the remaining terrorist of Avangard there. Go for the fake plant, go for the frag. Didn't work out. JKS too aware, and Liaz, he certainly performed in that situation. Got the damage done. Enough for that nade to find the kill. And I want to go back to my point on him. They talked about role shifting, and you've got a guy like JKS who's so prominent. You don't want to move him out on the behalf of Leas. Fantastic damage in what is a very fast round from Avangard. Uncharacteristically, they're already in the site, as has read it well. He swings around from E-Box, catches out the bomb, clears out Sandwich, and now he'll work back out toward the health side, toward the alleyway at A-Main. Smoke down as well. Kikert's forced back. He was 7-1, Leas. Or 7-0, oh, excuse me. Hadn't died. Yeah and yet was back to a pistol. He selflessly picked up the AWP and was willing to give that away and play without money himself despite not dying. So he's definitely willing to be a team player so far. Absolutely. Well, it all comes down to this moment, though. Glad I got that point out. It only took yeah. like three rounds, <laughs> We got by that. The way. Kicker does have the AK. We know he's incredibly handy with the weapon. James, though, only with a Glock. He has got a helmet. So uh, we'll see what can be done. He's got the smoke, the Molotov. He needs to set up an alley-oop here to see if his teammate can get them back in this one. It's not looking likely right now. That should confirm things. Like we said, James just left with a Glock here. Helmet on his head, but uh, waiting for a massive mistake to be made here. But the flank coming through, you can see that should confirm the round. He does get a kill, but down to 11 HP. No chance he survives as Renegades will take the lead even further now. Five to two, and that should be money completely broken. It's at about $2,000 per player. So no buy coming in here, but the loss bonus starting to accumulate this stage. They'll probably take PG-50s here, try and get a bomb plant down and have a full buy going into the next one. But to say, as I played that very well, be an understatement. He managed to get those two kills, smoke off the opposition, and make sure his teammates could rotate in and deny a very important plan for them. 
5-2 for Renegades, but a much closer game than that score suggests. Still early, so it's not like that's insurmountable as well for Abengar. But they will have to sit back to Pistols in this particular round. Nearly 1-1. One, one. With Pistols and a single op carried over just two rounds ago. A 5-on-2 in their favor as well. That nade was, it was, that was very clever from JKS because knew the bomb was down. Good communication that it was at E-Box. And with 11 seconds, he's got to run to the bomb and then get back to the, the train. He's only going one way. So it was well placed, well timed, well thought out. And it forced the hand of Buster, as we mentioned, who now, speaking of hands, has a deagle in his because he'll try and find the opener toward B. All they can really hope for here is the bomb being planted. It's incredibly difficult to do so and trying your best, best to head towards inside. They have one flash to do it. So I would assume five players get ready at this area. The brown holes flash through the window and try and get the bomb down. But we'll see what approach they opt for here. Under a minute. You can just try and bait out CT utility as well. It does cost cash. Every grenade they throw, you are at least siphoning something out of it. It's gratisfaction will open things up. Nice shot. The Org, like we said, you're going to see that weapon a lot here as JKM continues to frag. That's inside towards Buster. So, flashbang still available, but the bomb being planted at this point, very, very unlikely. Gratisfaction finds Prison off camera. Meanwhile, this is the important approach because if you can get around the corner and get some kills. Would do damage to the money. Speaking of kills and seeing Fitch on the right side of the kill feed has been a common theme. He sits at 0 and 8. Way back on Tengri, on to Gambit, former major winners. He replaced Zeus, and now he finds himself here on Avangar. All that experience isn't working out for him so far in eight rounds. He's gone down in all of them and yet to find a kill. Well, here comes the full buy we are looking for. Jame on the AWP. Gratisfaction staying on the Orc for now. That's absolutely fine. You don't need the AWP, but Train certainly lends itself towards our play style. UMP still in the hands of Liaz, trying to keep the money as strong as possible. If you play correctly, can be a very viable weapon. Lots of nooks and crannies to stick yourself in, and uh, especially towards areas like the Pop Dog or Lower Ramp, you can make that weapon do a lot of damage. As uh, I think we have the first tactical timeout. This was called by Avangar. We'll see if this will yield any sort of success. They've tried some fast approaches. They've tried some very slow methodical defaults. We haven't seen a technical execution yet. Maybe that's next on the menu. We'll find out in round number nine here as Renegades are quite healthy at this point, 6-2. They've got a buy in the bag as well. That's why they're keeping the UMP. They want to keep that money as strong as possible. And this does look like an execution to me, but it will be a slow one as the bomb's still in T-spawn and they want to get control of Pop Dog first. So maybe going to be setting up a play to grant them access to this area. So as a holds bottom pop dog, first time we've really seen a sort of cat and mouse game, dog and cat game with pop dog. Sure. Either or. First time we've really seen this position subside into something because it's been sort of executions, late timings, rifles not really in both teams' hands as of yet. So now we're getting more to the default to what we would expect. James does play with Fallen's signature on his scope. So maybe an idol of his. Might get a chance to meet him if they can make it through this stage. And he's got Leaz with an incredibly good approach, considering how fast that quick scope was. And he was still almost moving at the time. Well, at this point, Krizen making a little bit of a gambit towards the upper right. We see three players there as well. They know JKS anchors this alone. If JKS gets multiple frags, though, the round could swing, but he gets nothing. I would say that's a save call already, but the bomb not there. And Jame looking for flanks here. He might be taken out by Azza, but that's a nice, easy kill for him. That confirms the round victory. Great work by Avangard there. They get that pick outside, or towards Ivy, I should say. And then knowing that pick's happened, Matt, of course, JKS is going to have solo presence towards the side. He's not going to have backup there. They have to rotate because of that single pick that came. They go towards the upper round and that's where you can really abuse the fact that the inside player, he can't dump all his utility on you. He has to focus mainly on the lower ramp. They just walk in a contact play towards upper, find that kill, not even requiring a trade, and then there it is. Jame watching the flank as well, takes down Azza, and it's going to be five players surviving by the looks of things and gratisfaction and Jacob to hold on to their rifles. They're not together, though. Like we said, they have got to buy in the bag, so they've got rifles next round, whatever happens, but... Ideally, you want to save at least one. You can see as there are 2K. We're going to get 1,400 next round. Gratisfaction should confirm things in terms of the save potential. Holds onto his org for now, but now makes his way towards Dumpster and Jacob and T-Spawn. So they can at least play off each other at this point. So Palm goes off. We still don't get any indication of which team wants to try and run with the half. But guns to be brought out yet again. On the... 
Trying to gauge side, James. There you go. Look at how little he saw. I love the replays with that X-ray. I still maintain that that's a brilliant way of, of, of displaying how fast some of these shots are, especially when you see in slow motion. You can yeah. barely, barely see any texture difference. And these guys are keen-eyed. So look at the compromises. Like we said, without saving those two weapons, they could have been a, a bit of hot water there, but Renegades do have the all power once again. A decent amount of utility. Not everything is here. has lacking some bits and pieces here or there. And this is a very default setup from Avangar. You can see two players at Ivy, one holding Pop Dog and main entrance. And then, of course, the inside area is waiting for initial aggression from the CT to be a run boost. You get Jamie in position, can just go for the straight up pick like he has. That's a great shot there. And you can see gratisfaction. It's so difficult to try and react to that. A lot of teams run boost across just to negate the AWP. He just wants a straight up challenge. That's kind of Guardian esque sort of play. Gather the bomb. Minute and 13 to play with. Lots still to go. Tons of utility as well. Five smokes, one Molotov, seven flashes. Everyone can carry two, remember. Four nades total for those that are new. And one HE grenade on their side. So as a going to try and play closer proximity, they don't have a whole lot of defensive utility left. Just two smokes and one incendiary. So they really have to be aggressive on their stance and their positioning. This is what we call a gamble stack now. So they know this round is a bit out of their reach. So they're going to take a gamble and put three players inside. If they come towards the inner area, they challenge. They fight two for nail. They'll do whatever they can to actually win this round. If they go outer, yeah, as you can see, it's just broad Liaz and he goes down. That's a round save already. You're not even going to go for this one. You're not even going to attempt the retake. to hold on to what you have. Unfortunately, it's the orb that goes down, but not really much you can do against that. It's not like Gratisfaction made a mistake. That run boost was just very well executed by Avangard to get the opening kill. And James is a very, very fast player. And, and again, I said forward stance aggressively. The gamble stack was actually for the same reason. They didn't have that utility to really play off of, to play a default and cut off Avangar. So Renegades will concede one more. We go back to a two-round game. Don't forget as well, you tweeted it out, actually. The HLTV live feature allowing you to switch between two games, but there is two games going on at a time. Vici playing Fnatic right now. That should be a good one as well. A lot of teams are not really sure what the level of each we bring here. We know they're dangerous, you know, the Asian teams can cause upsets and have uh, a very strange play style, and uh, I'm sure we can get some updates as we continue here. This is about what we expect. They're in the Renegades on the CT side. They've got a lead right now, but Avangar certainly capable of clawing this one back, and it's all down to these opening picks of Jane right now. He's not finding multiple kills for the round. He's got 10 in total, um, but he's actually just finding great picks. The fact he says on Gratisfaction has been real fall in their side. Just to open things up, this is so fast. You can see Gratisfaction fires the shot but it's so difficult to land that one and Crimson comes in to punish as well as soon as the opening kill comes in he makes sure he capitalizes on the fact they're scrambling trying to reassess the situation and now is this going to be the buy the full investment from Renegades apparently not they're going to be happy with the three rifles they have I'd expect maybe a couple of PD50 drops JKS can certainly do that just to give these USB players something as now James is trying to suss out the situation did they take the ego here have they force ball what have they got you do not want to do anything too fast here Try and get some information, allow that orb to do its work. And it should be a huge advantage here for Avangar, but we will see. The three rifles capable, and it's certainly with these sort of plays, as Jake will get boosted on the server here. Just to note, Fitch, one of the more household names, 0 and 10 with yeah. ADR 3. So, ADR 3. Yeah. I didn't catch that particular stat. That makes it even worse. Oh, three damage on average around. He is having a nightmare. Yeah. At 0 and 8, I thought, okay, fine. We've seen people go 0 and 7 before, but again, very little Damage applied there, 44 yeah. damage to Jacob. It's, it's really not going well, 0-11. Not what we expect from him. No, definitely not. But remember, Avangar, four rounds on the T side, even if that's all they got, it's enough to win the game right now. If you're aiming for like six or seven on the T side in this sort of matchup, I think they're quite equally matched. These two teams, I think they were both seeded, what, eighth and ninth um, after the teams rounded up their ideas as Crimson tries to fight back here. It's actually looking quite promising for Avangar after losing the initial kill. Four versus four. Gratis Faction still up. Not for long, though. Jacob has to go huge here with the AK-47. That's his third kill of the round. JKS with that orc showing us what it's capable of. And now the two versus one begins. Jame realizes the orc probably not the best weapon for this situation. Does have the bomb on his back. And he'll start to book it towards the inside bombs. And that's the right call. There's no point being methodical here, Matt. You might as well just jump out, hope for the best, and you're going to get away with this one. As you can see, as is rotating in. He's come out towards upper. He doesn't get spotted. So we'll let's get the bomb out of this. So Azadeh will potentially hear this. He doesn't. But 
Five seconds left. There's no way Jane does anything more than plant it. Azza should be able to trade this out. As soon as the bomb goes down, he doesn't go for it straight away. If he misses this shot, it could be a nightmare. But Calm makes sure he hits it, and that's no problem at all. The reason we're worried there is because Azza wasn't with his teammate at that point, and Jacob was left on 7 HP. He could have waited a bit longer and just made sure there was two well, potentials there, but overall... He, he was kind of like right in between the two options, really, because I thought if... For, for new viewers, of which there's going to be many throughout the course of the Major, so we'll touch on that. You have to be planning it four seconds. Yep. It was five seconds, he was committed. You're pretty much guaranteed in a 1v2 he's going to try and get the bomb down because he at least wants the money. As it could have peaked as that was happening, sped it up a little bit. Even if he dies in that situation and, the, and he's not planning, they win it on time. Yeah. He waited and then still went alone. It was like right in between the two options. That was actually, yeah. If you're looking at the Counter-Strike guide, that's probably the wrong way to play it. But overall, he wins it. He gets the shot. That, that's absolutely fine. Can't argue with that. And that's not even a force weapon really, guys. Remember, two full eco players there. And they took it in matters into their own hands. They pushed towards Ivy. They know they can get something done. That's been a, a main point of access for Avangar as Jacob gets three kills inside all the AK. Allows them to win out in that two versus one. And now with the buys coming in, do we have a healthy purchase here for Avangar? We do. We've got the all there for James as well with a bit of residual cash as we get into it. Round 12, 7 to 4 in favor of Renegade. Still anyone's game as both teams now fully equipped, feeling healthy, and not a single M4 to be seen. Orcs across the board with the AWP backing them up and inside play. Coming through, this time Gratisfaction does get the better of Jame. That orb is incredibly mobile on the CT side. You can move it so many different positions at the start as Jake can follow things up with a double HE. Was that from the pop dog areas? Azza joins in as well with a bit of damage. So he might have thrown the nade through the window and caught him completely there as they go for the totes and drop here. And really not going to work out for them. Azza, he seems to play that position a lot. He's very capable there. He's got great aim. And uh, it's pure deathmatch in that tiny little room as uh, he hits every single shot, no real damage taken, all good. He's gonna push that ladder as well. He's taken advantage of the fact that they've gone underneath and smartly, oh, he's, is he gonna go back down the stairs? I thought he was actually gonna figure out Fitch's movement pattern and actually catch him from behind. Got away from it, showers, and then thought he was gonna rotate back over toward Walker's side, but didn't get it. That allows an opening toward ladder. They've now called that that's open. He may get the AWP Fitch, but there's nowhere to go, and he's going down because Azza has already occupied all of this space, well aware of the situation, or is he? Ooh. This is an interesting... Is Fitch finally... Oh, that yes, is. he is. Gonna get on the board. It may be inconsequential to the round, but listen, he breaks the goose egg. He gets one. It's, I was about to say, let's just hope he can get a kill here and just uh, get his head in the major because that will be something. If he saves the AWP as well, that's great, but Renegades, they are going to be aware of the prospect. They can kill him after that 25 seconds at the top of your screen expires. He gets no money for the next round, so they're not going to hunt him just yet. They want to be very patient. Jacob's setting up this play right now. He's like the Predator coming in, just sniffing out, working out where he could possibly be, and about five seconds when it hits there, you'll see all the CT start to push towards the inside. They want to kill him just as the timer expires. You can see it happening right now. It's all coming together. JKS will actually wait until it gets to the two-second mark, then probably swing out. Here it comes. Swing after. Take the money. Oh, good shot from Fitch. That He's was still got idea. the skill. He may not have gotten many kills, but those two are pretty flashy. But yes, you're right. Exactly. Take the opt down. A player that's already struggling in this game. Give him no money in the next rounds. Would have been a brilliant situation. Now they get an op. Still don't have a lot of money across the team, though, do they? Absolutely not. Here's Azza getting it done. Two players jump down on his screen. It can be a little bit awkward. That, that drop, it was in fashion for a while, but I haven't seen it yield massive results in terms of actually trading out a kill. It seems like it either goes very, very well indeed, and you find no one there, and you get two players set up, or both of you get mowed down. You just say, well, it didn't really work out. But further, Molotov flashbang approach with a single player, to be honest, to make it uncomfortable for the CTs instead of getting two targets. But there you go. Gratisfaction, like we said, moving position every round. This battle continues, and Jame will come out on top this time. It was towards lower ramp the first kill was found before. This time at upper, as JKS knows he has to negate the AWP. We'll drop a smoke and try and get in position. As is going to work his way up the ladder. Headshot easily available for Kikard, who's waiting the whole time. He's got confident, I think, in that position after last round. Just to note as well, in this pregame, ourselves and the analysts said it's all about the orbs here. Gratis faction step up, and so far, the opening picks have come through either of those two players pretty much every single round so far and sway the outcome. As again, finding damage. He's gone quiet as of late because they haven't been pushing onto Ivy quite so much. In fact, he's gone from 9-1 and one to 9-7 and seven as he'll fall yet again. Fitch, he's moving now. He's got JKS up to three kills, and the bomb goes down as a result of that. As Jacob finds himself in a one on four. Money enough on him. 5,500, 48 for gratisfaction. So he's already got an op in hand. And as is at 35, they can they can 
pursue this. They can make this awkward. Every kill he gets matters. We often say that in these situations, and it's true again here. Absolutely. Every kill in Counter-Strike has a knock-on effect that might not even affect the next round, but going forward could sabotage and cause a reset. As Jacob holds towards CT spawn here, he's got a smoke and a flashbang to save as well, and the defuse kit, 5k in his bank account as well, so he can drop the AWP. I've got his fashion by himself, but it's normally better to keep his money as strong as possible. But there it is, the fifth round on the board for Avangar. After a rough start, it was obviously Renegades picked up the pistol, looked incredibly strong there, but fighting back with some decent rounds here. Nothing too special in terms of the tactical approach. We had, like I said, we haven't seen anything massively technical here. It's all been down to these old battles at the very start and work out who comes out on top. They're quite equally matched in terms of skill. It's Jamie who's had the majority of the kills, but Gratis Faction's had his moments as well. Kick out there, waiting for the reaction play from Azza towards the Pop room. Obviously nails that. That's a hell of a shot from Buster. Uh, a player we potentially don't talk about enough. I'd, I'd have him in a number three in terms of excitement. You've got Jamie at the top, kick out second, then Buster could definitely cause some damage. As you'll see, the force buy come through. Of sorts, it's Renegades who do have enough to get a full buy here, but you see compromises. There's a UMP out as they go for the double orb, and it's JKS. A player who's certainly capable of using the weapon, holding inside now, feeling like maybe he's a little bit too vulnerable with just a rifle, wants to push him back a bit more with orb presence. UMP still waiting inside at Ivy as well. Nate down. It takes, I guess, a small amount of damage from that. 19. Chip damage, Jason calls it. Chip damage? Yeah. Is that what he calls his diet? <laughs> Potentially. <laughs> he's on the other stream. He can't hear. You can say what it's nah, It's true. I can say no, one, no one's going to tell him. Don't worry. One minute remaining and an inside execution potentially. They had a lot of success at uh, Pop Dog, but all five players make it four as uh, Jame has the orb towards outside right now. They potentially don't want to commit to this unless they have the orb there because the idea is you want the players to take the attention away from the AWP, allow him to establish himself at that lower ramp and trade off him. Renegade is certainly ready for this. Like we said, JKS with the sniper at the back, Jacob with the rifle at the front. Smoke's coming in. It has to be an inside play now. They have no time to fall back. And they will commit. Jacob there. Hopefully going to get two frags out of this. But Kicker takes him down. And Jacob is struggling. If you miss one shot of the orb, you're pretty much done for in that sort of scenario. And that's a guaranteed round. No chance of going for it. Can't even think about a retake at this point. Kicker finds two kills. And indeed finds the round. It's going to be Gratis Faction to save his orb. Wrong place. This time, unfortunately, has been dynamic. We see him inside. Connector, Ivy, main entrance. And... Uh, it's a bit of a guessing game to work out where they head towards at the very start. No opening picks, but it was kick up who got the damage done, and Jacob was ready for it. The lower play was all set up, but he got flashed, taken down, and then JKS missing the shot, and the round was completely done. So, will they save anything from this? I doubt it. Gratis might be traded out here. We'll see. They now know exactly where he is, and the orb can actually challenge. Good find, certainly. Preserve the AWP for Gratis Faction at the very least. Does reveal where he is, but as it will take away some aggro if anyone wanted to try and push down Ivy, they don't need to pick it for him as well. They can actually come out of the round with more players surviving than their opposition despite not picking up the win. Two timeouts remaining just to note. And it's the final round, so it's not like Avangar made a huge bond by giving a couple of kills at the end there, just, just to know that. Absolutely. I just want to point out the timeouts for, for Avangar because this is something we touched on in London at the showcase event, the GG bet. Yes. They used every timeout in every game, every regardless map. of the outcome. Yep. And it was pretty spread out, but methodically used. I thought it was a good decision by them to sit and talk things through, and, and even in situations where they were winning but were focusing on the economy. Well, there it is, opening picks once again, but a trade comes through. Just to know, Avangar are one of the youngest teams here. Uh, I think the average age is like 22. Um, so yes, they probably need the timeouts just to kind of get their heads sorted, get some input from the coach and calm everyone down a little bit. It can be quite daunting here at the Major, of course. But a four and four ensues as Azza down to 15 HP, but he was the one that got the trade in return towards Chrism. And maybe another inside play here. They got the Brown Horse control. They know that JKS has been up and down in this area. And this round in particular, he only has the CZ-75. Not really the weapon you want when you're defending for angry terrorists making their way towards a very valuable part of the map. He has an incendiary that's now gone. That hasn't really bought him much, to be honest. That's seven seconds where they won't go towards inside, but they weren't even ready themselves. Uh, maybe the smoke towards the back baited him out slightly as we get to the 50 second mark. Another gamble stack required potentially here as it doesn't look like Avangar want to head towards inside. The bomb's still there around that T-spawn position. Jane with the orb, not going to jump down, surely, with just the AWP. 
but there is a low HP Azza, who has played that position like six rounds now. Surely they can best him with this drop. They've done this drop before, though. When he hit double headshot, they absolutely win it out. And the addition of the flashbang was a slight change because finding both, even if he gets the lineup on the first one, finding both with his vision lost, you're pretty much guaranteed the trade. So they did adapt, and I like that. That was a cool little move, actually. They, they actually hit the floor before the flash goes off. It just makes things uncomfortable. Speaking of which, at CZ75 actually paying dividends here. The knife has to come through, and now Jame left in the two versus one, but no time. I think JKS did enough here. He hasn't even got enough time to plant at this point. He has a Kill both of them, not going to happen, and a really exciting round to close things out there. It is going to be 9-6 to Renegades, but we had some fantastic moments there, and it is the CZ.